Okay. Diana, what's our question today? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Say that again. All right. So, Diana, what's our question today? Is artificial intelligence changing the way we write our stories? Is it the brave new world we're coming into, Eddie? Well, you know, the way we started this episode, I would say, yes, it probably is. Because uh, with chat GPT, uh, the way we've stumbled over the introduction can be cleaned up and fixed just like that. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about chat GPT. We've talked about artificial intelligence once before on the show and, and about some of the pluses and minuses about it. Uh, but we wanted to delve in a little bit specifically about chat GPT. And we talked about this before we came on the air. I'm not going to try to explain what the GPT is. It's computer ease kind of stuff, uh, gener generative, transformer, something like that. Um, Anyway, nobody, nobody who was branding this would have come up with that way of explaining it. But um, it's a way, I, I guess my, my experience with it, Diana, so far has been, because uh, I got into it because one of, one of our authors after our last episode said, hey, you tried it. You know, have you messed around with it? And I said, oh, a little bit, but not a lot. Um, so what I've found it to be really good for, and, and this is one reason I wanted to kind of talk about this today, it's really good as a writing prompt. Um, and so if you've ever sat down to that, that terrible blank page that, <laughs> that so often we fear, uh, the beginning of a new chapter, the beginning of a new scene, how are we going to start this thing? You know, we may have in our mind what we want to do, right? And I'll just give you an example. I'm, I'm working on a, uh, I was working on a scene uh, yesterday uh, where my main character wakes up beside a campfire and the two people that had been there the night before are gone. So now he's alone in the wilderness um, by a campfire, and he's, he's in the wilderness where Jesus is being tempted. Okay, that's where the character is. So he's out in this wilderness with nothing around it, just him now. No weapon to defend himself. Um, he's up among the wild. That's how I knew I wanted the scene to open, with him being alone. But to start writing it, you know, I was fumbling all over the words and everything else. So I tried to check GPT. Let's see what we can come up with. And I tried about four different prompts. Um, and in the end, that I'm already better. So, so I just went back and had to do the hard work myself, you know, and just kind of created <laughs> in, in my mind. But, but it turns out that's okay, because that's, to me, part of the benefit of chat GPT is in seeing three or four different variations of somebody else opening that scene, it kind of got my mind working and my fingers moving in the right direction. Um, and I don't know, have you tried it any at all with any of, any of your clients or any of your emails sending back to people or anything like that? No, and I guess I was resistant because spell check frustrates me so much. <laughs> they already think they know what I want to say. And um, I was trying to say Dr. D in a text. That's Dr. Darius Daniels, but we all call him Dr. D. And it kept saying Dr. DeSantos. And I was like, no, Dr. <laughs> D. And it would not let me write just Dr. D, period. It kept pointing. So maybe a Dr. DeSantos is coming into my life. I don't know, but it, it just frustrated me. But Eddie, you shared a link and we'll put that link down in our description later uh, on our Reality Coaching for Writers YouTube video. Um, I watched that and it was fascinating because like you said, the prompts alone were very, uh, helpful to the to the writer and and like you said that first page blank page can be terrifying so i really think it will be a good tool for uh just getting started and yeah. i also thought it was interesting have you tried it for a chapter outline no hey help hey, hold that thought for a minute because i want to stick okay. to this before we get to the next part of that um 
So for me, one of the things to that prompt thing is it's something Al Gansky taught me years ago, probably the first writers conference I went to uh, about the blank page. And Al said, if you're if you're looking at that blank page, and you, you're terrified and you don't know what to do next. He said, go find an author, a writer that you enjoy and go find any part of their manuscript and just start copying from their page onto yours. Just type, start typing and trying to replicate exactly what they have. He said, no, don't, don't use it. He said, right. he said, but just that process of, of looking at the words, hearing the words mentally and typing them out gets a writer's muse working. It's kind of like jump starts the muse. And I think so in, in some ways, chat GPT does a really good job of that. You don't have to go yes. and pull a book off the shelf and go, I'm trying to write like Clive Cussler today. And so I'm going to pull a Cussler book, you know. You don't have to do that. Start with Chat GPT, and it'll kind of spur you and get you going. But no, to your point, I haven't. I haven't tried the outline thing um, yet. Did you try? It? Did you try doing a no, chat? No, but I was looking at the example of it in that video uh, that we'll link, and I just thought it was fascinating. I did think it was interesting. One of the problems that uh, kept showing up in this demonstration was it wanted to wrap the story up quickly. So each chapter, it wanted to keep wrapping the story up, you know, and making it a short story instead of, but you could prompt it then to continue the thread and continue the, the plot. But um, I noticed that it was the details that you put in your prompt to the GPT, chat GPT, like first person, um, set in an alien, on an alien planet. And the more things that you gave it to work with, then the uh, more extravagant the suggestions were. And you could ask specifically for a hook and a plot. And yeah. It generated those things. And like, I can see it, just like you said, the value alone to just prime your pump. That's what we say in Pennsylvania, yeah. prime the pump, you know, get it going, get get words just coming up. Um, I could see that being alone, very, very valuable to write. Yeah. And they may eventually, they may eventually get this, get this resolved. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of mentioned a couple of the deans, a couple of the things I've found so far that, uh, you know, I would just call them deans for. Number one, it writes in passive voice a lot, a oh. lot. There, you, if you, so if you put your, put your prompt in and start seeing what comes back, there's a lot of passive writing in what you get back. Uh, and there's a lot of sequential cause and effect that comes back incorrectly. You know, we, we've talked this before. Uh, if you write a sentence and halfway through, there's the word so, because, and therefore, that means your cause and effect is out of order. You started with the solution and it, it happened because this happened. And you just, right. if you just go flip it and put the action first and then, then the solution, that's a, that's a better way to write the story because it's oh, more, good, active, yeah. more, more active. So chat GPT does a really, I think, poor job of getting the sequential uh, of the action in a story. Uh, and the other thing is they, I mean, like I said, they use passive writing a lot. I, I put in things like my characters in the wilderness and I just put in and add snakes, lions, and tigers, you know? And after I wrote the paragraph, it goes, and this was a place known with snakes, lions, and tigers. <laughs> <laughs> got it in there, check. <laughs> yeah, I got it in there, check. Oh, that's funny. That's very funny. But again, um, I think changes are coming because it's been so rapid just since the inception of uh, making programs, building programs for uh, this, the, the advances they're already making. So uh, those that are, you know, beta testing all of this and, and speak geek, they are saying in six months time, a lot of these issues, they're going to, they're going to clear up, you know, and I thought, Eddie, it was very interesting when he uh, kind of threw out the possibility of Scrivener having within its program this 
chat GPT. Yeah. And yeah, and then being able to um, combine it uh, was very interesting. Yeah, so that's and that's maybe we'll move on now to, to why how to kind of how I think this is going to be implemented. And you and I have shared some emails back and forth about this whole artificial intelligence concept and whether it's going to be the demise of civilization and all that. And um, you know, I I got to thinking about this back our last conversation, and, and I mentioned this to you that um, artificial intelligence has been around for a long time. We use it all the time. Uh, we just do. And I mentioned the fact that the first synthesizer came out in the mid-60s. Uh, the Beatles were actually in their studio and heard that there was a synthesizer in the building. Um, and so they went down, you know, Paul went down and, and watched this thing. And of course, it was, you know, took up the whole room, right? Because it's a computer with a keyboard, right? Making noise, making sounds. And, and Paul was fascinated by it. He's like, oh my gosh, this is great. I mean, this... <laughs> And he hit a button, you know, and he heard a horn section, ah, you know, and because George Martin had been bringing in strings, he'd been bringing in horns, they were having to pay, the Beatles were having to pay for these musicians to come into the right. studio and record, lay down their tracks and then overlay them. And the Beatles looked at this and went, solution, cheap, mm -hmm. right? That's artificial intelligence, you know? Yes, and now the Moog is small and can just be carried with all the other band yeah. gear and Put right on the stage with them and and, and to your point the spell check artificial yeah. intelligence microsoft word artificial intelligence when it does the grammar check all that's right. artificial intelligence it just is um right so i don't see that part going away and i'm like you i think the scrivener part bring it incorporating it into the story um i can see where that's they and microsoft word both will probably latch right. on you know apple as well um mm -hmm. Here, here's where I, here's why I'm not threatened by it, because despite the fact that it can go and put a lot of stuff, take a lot of ingredients and throw it into a pot and stir it up and produce something that's edible and maybe not half bad, it's still not high cuisine. And I don't think, because I was looking at the way, the way the, uh, the bit in the video, the way the story was being developed, right. you and I, you and I teach writing. You know, we know what good writing is and we know what what every scene needs to have in it or as much as you can cram into every scene. Right. Right. Uh, right. There are multiple ways to write scenes. Right. The way we teach writing, the way I teach writing a scene may not work for somebody else. They may want to do something a little bit differently. Um, and that's mm -hmm. fine because that's their preference. Right. So this is going to give you, I think, a typical hamburger all the time in one way. And there are multiple ways to make hamburgers, right? And different ways to, to put, put things in it. So I'm not really as concerned about it taking over the industry. Uh, I think it's gonna be pretty obvious when you start, when people start reading some of the chat GPT novels, they're gonna go, okay, yeah, that was done by a computer. That was a computer. That was a computer, <laughs> you know? Uh, well, I, one advantage I see in help with outlines and help with, um, uh, you know, hooks and things, is a uh, writer is going to be able to turn a book around, plugging in, you know, what he wants the story to be and say much quicker. So they're going to be able to, instead of putting out two books a year, novels uh, a year, maybe four. Yeah, I, I I would agree with you there. I think I think the rough draft of a book should should come quicker now if you use right. if you use Chat GPT because again you, you kind of know it you know what you want the scene to be mm -hmm. about which is you know when we know that and then you, it's the the writing in it and I think that'll come quicker. Yes, it's that second draft, third draft, fourth draft that you actually would then have to go in and start taking out the bad stuff and putting in your <laughs> yeah. voice and rearranging yeah. your phrasing. Um, I mean. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm working through a, a, a rewrite of a chapter one um, right now, <clears throat> and I thought, well, I'll just use Chat GPT to see if there's any way to, to make it better. I'm spending just as much time <laughs> with that than I was just rewriting it myself, so it really hasn't saved me any time. I, I just probably slowed down the process because I'm, I'm putting things in and going, no, nah, that's that's that doesn't work. You know, it's it's, it's a scene by a river, and to your point. You, you know, if you're asking for, for a specific scene, um, 
you know, like if there's a bird that's squawking over the over the water, and there's a somebody with a lantern, and you know, if you give it all that, you're trying to craft that scene, and you want to make sure there's not one element you're overlooking that would, you know, just make it zing. Chat GPD gives you the full the beginning of it, the little section, and then the tail end. I mean, it's a lot of fluff on either side of it before you get to that one little bitty part that you're interested in. So um, it it can be time consuming. Have, so so have you have you did done what I did is which is take scripture verses and have chat GPT rewrite them have you done that yet I, no but <laughs> I saw that you did that yes yes share the experience with our listeners yeah. today yeah so in the so there's a way in chat GPT you can say uh write in the style or write in the voice of an author that's pretty famous they, they you know chat GPT has to have enough uh, works of works that it can go through and learn the voice of Ernest Hemingway, for example, or Edgar Allan Poe or somebody like that. Um, so it has to learn its voice. And then you can go in and say, so right in the voice of Edgar Allan Poe, um, you know, John 316, for example, you know, something like that. And I don't remember which ones I picked, uh, but I took the same verse and, and had it right in the voice of Dave Barry, um, Stephen King, and Pat Conroy, I think, maybe was the third one. You know, not three... Mark Twain. I'm surprised. Well, not Mark Twain, because he it's it Twain is is so old and his voice is his humor is distinctive, but his voice is not necessarily unless you unless you catch that humor. The humor is, yeah. is what yeah. you're gonna pick it up. But Pat Conroy writes what I call poetry and prose. Um and King writes, you know, just scary stuff. And then right. uh, Hemingway Short and Dave Barry is just funny, right? So anyway, I picked those three to put them all together. And it is really interesting the way they come back to rewrite the verses uh, in, in those voices. And it, it's just kind of funny, you know, um, to, to, watch, to watch it take a verse and just rewrite it. And I can see where that would just be, I don't know, really fun to read. You know, we've got the message, you know, we've got the message version yeah. of the scripture. You know, uh, I think that could be just really fun for a Sunday school class or for kids, kids Sunday school class. I would encourage authors to do that. You know, go take take your favorite verses and put them in Chat GPT and have them rewrite it in, in certain voices and see how you like that. Um, well, now Eddie, haven't you been writing a New Testament pi uh, version pirate speak in pirate speak? Yeah, I, yeah. Well, that, I was doing that, and that's that's where this wilderness thing. I was doing that in pirate speak. Um, yeah, I was. I started that, and I picked it up and started that project again last week. And this is now we're down a rabbit trail. But uh, then the the idea came to me is rather than write it in pirate speak, to write it in first person uh, of an individual who was actually walking around with Jesus at the time. So it's oh. not necessarily John Mark. I don't use his name, and it's not going to be John Mark. It's going to be actually be an unnamed, unnamed scribe that just witnesses all this. Um, and part of it, Diana, was because when I went back to and read it, I was like, "Man, eh, the pirate speaks fun, but really, it's just the verse. It's just the chapter again, and just a different voice. This will be a little bit different doing it this way." And it's and I get to break it out into three different versions. There's the first year of Jesus before it, it ends with it, it's going to end this version is going to end with him about ready to be thrown off the cliff at uh, Nazareth uh, when they were about ready to kill him the first time and that's when that volume will end but anyway so that's I kind of table the pirate speak for now um, okay okay and, and part of it Diana was because I went back to chat GPT to see if they could make it any better and they couldn't uh. That they don't know how pirates speak yet, I guess, you know. <laughs> they kept throwing a lot of uh, hoi maids and, and, and saves and stuff like that. Um, they didn't get the Charlton Heston, Long John Silver narration. They were down. doing Johnny Depp all the way, right? <laughs> no, they didn't, they didn't get it. They didn't get a lot. They, I mean, they got some Johnny Depp, but not all of them. Um, well, one other advantage um, for historical writers in using chat GPT is that instead of going to Google and doing your research or the library, um, you can actually put in, write in, type in and ask the question, uh, were there snakes in Ireland, you yeah. know, or, you know, in the year 1891 or whatever. 
and it will tell you. And you don't have to go through Google, which is heavy with ads and things right now. So it's kind of a pain to Google search something. Um, it will help you that way. So that's, I can see where historical romance writers, historical, you know, uh, like our friend uh, Craig Von Busick, who writes American history, uh, you know, takes uh, Ulysses S. Grant's story and wrote it, how it would benefit him to, to do research easel, easier, you know. Yeah, no, and there is an advantage that I have played around with it on the on my pirate novels. I, I have played around with it with saying, write, rewrite this in the voice of, of uh, a sailor in the 1700s. Okay. And it does it does a better job of that. Instead of instead of using, you know, we'll go, we will go here, we shall, or and it changes, it changes oh, the, the yeah. dynamic of the sentence. Uh, you know, how sometimes in, in old English the the phrasing is changed around. The words are placed in different order in a sentence, so it reads kind of awkward. King James is wonderful for this, right? It's hard to read King James because the sentence structure is so foreign to our ears, right? And backwards often, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it did. So Chat GB did did a pretty good job of that of getting. The, so if you're looking for if you're looking for a, a unique character's voice, like you've got multiple characters in a story, and each character needs to have their own voice, so you're not constantly tagging them. He said she said or whatever chat gpt might be able to do a good job of that you know to give each of those characters their their unique voice where you don't have to tag them all the time they you can just read and go oh that's that's that's, that's the captain of the ship speaking you know that kind of thing should do that um, interesting so if you're doing a time slip novel that might be really helpful if that character is speaking old english because that's the time period that you're they are present. I just read a book that it was difficult at first to slip back and forth, but then once you got into it, um, it I easily then, it, but it took a while. And if I would have had, we talked about this last week, if I would have had any other book to read, I might've yeah. put it down, but I'm glad I didn't. I saw as you went the uh, overlying threads, you know, of the two timeline timelines overlapping, but chat GBT might be good for something like that. Yeah, I, I've tried. I, so in in my, in my down to Davy Jones uh, novel that I've, I've finished now, because I'm just in the proofing stage. But um, in that one, the, the voice of Noah, excuse me, the voice of Jonah at the beginning of the book. I wanted a unique voice. I wanted I wanted somebody that spoke like. A, a Hebrew would back in that time, right? Of course, I haven't been helping there, so I don't know, right? <laughs> right. And I'm not Yiddish. I don't speak. I don't speak Jewish, right? And I don't. Right. I wasn't New York. I didn't get. I didn't grow up listening to it. So I'm, all those things are working against me for that character. So I gave. I gave the, the character of Jonah. I gave him the voice of Yoda. You know. Oh. But yeah, exactly. Now you just said it. That's that sounds exactly like Yoda. Oh, you know. <laughs> and so. I, so to enhance it to see if it could get any better, because he's, he's Jonah only has a few speaking parts in this novel, so it's not like a ton of stuff I'd have to go back and rewrite. But I gave you know some of its lines to Chat GPT to see if it would do any better. And the only thing it did at the end, it, at, at the end, it would write a sentence and go, hmm, you know, <laughs> kind of like and that was that was the only thing it could add to it. So I'm like, well, oh, I'm disappointed. Funny. Okay, Eddie, I have a question for you. I asked this before we started recording, but um, our listeners probably have the same question. What did you pay for this? You've been using it now. What have you paid and how do you access it? Where do you go to get it? Is yeah, it so, app? No, so it's, it's the, um, I'm trying to see if I can pull it up. Let me see if I can get back to it. Yeah, the, the the web the web link that I'm using is chat.openai.com forward slash chat. So okay. chat period openai.com forward slash forward slash chat. Um, and I'm logged in, so you know you got to create an account name, and I'm logged in. And then if you you know you've got a you just got a screen, and there's there's a a prompt with a small bar that just says send a message 
which I'm, well, I'm not sending a message, but that's where you just enter what, what you want and then any text that you add to it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking like one sentence, you know, one, one string of dialogue, right? And I'll put it in quote marks and I'll say, rewrite this in the voice of, you know, uh, Ernest Hemingway. No, right. Hemingway is not good. So I, it's better to use somebody like Pat Conroy. Uh, rewrite this in the in the voice in the style of Pat Conroy and put it in quotation marks, and then it'll come back and it's you know you get this flavor flavorful kind of dialogue that you wouldn't normally get right, and, and it, like I said, it's fun to kind of it's kind of fun to read it, and then you're going yeah, but that's not what my character speaks like right you know. So um, when you type in there, you're actually talking directly to the computer. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, and you it, did not pay for this. This is not something you're paying for right now. No, you and I talked about this before we came on. It's free. Uh, this doesn't cost you anything. It's kind of like Google's free. Search engine's free. This is free. Um, but I did look on Wikipedia, and I think I think I told you that they uh, right now this this app. Uh, is or the company is valued at twenty six billion dollars. Wow, wow! And, yeah, and, and I guess they're valued at that because somebody's looking at the potential, of going, mm, well, "We're going to monetize this." <laughs> well, and and it's in the beta testing stage right now, so they're ironing out kinks. People are responding and letting them know, reviewing it, what they think of it, and. You know, I'm sure it will become a subscription app. Maybe there'll be a free version like Grammarly, and maybe there'll be a, you know, uh, more detailed version yeah. uh, later would that would be a subscription. But I think already they said six million people are using Chatbot, Chat yeah. GBT. So it's like you think if that many people were just paying four ninety five a month. It's you can and there's going to be more people using it. Um, you could see that it would be valued at that, you know. Yeah, I would I would pay a, a small fee to have access to it each month if if it learned learned right. my voice, if it yeah. learned what I'm looking for, rather than right. throwing all this stuff at me. And you know, and it should. I mean, that's what it's doing. It's learning the, the it's learning the things that I'm not taking from it. So eventually it's going, okay, we gave, we gave three to Eddie and he didn't take any off. So apparently right. he doesn't right. like the response. So they should be learning that. Uh, and if they learn that and finally said, well, this is what he's looking for and we're going to give him that and, and they get better. Yeah, that, that's worth it. Um, I will Isn't tell that you like Google serving us ads from yeah. just what we pass up or what we respond to. And yeah. It just makes me think of George Orwell's writing. Big Brother is definitely, I mean, yeah. we're and we're cooperating because it's pretty cool to be able to let them get to know us and make our life easier. Yeah. Yeah. I will tell you the one one last thing, and then we'll, we'll just kind of wrap this up. The one last uh, deficiency that I found with Chat GPT mm -hmm. is that it's difficult to write suspense and thriller. Uh, and horror. It's and it's really hard to write horror. Um, like if you're trying to write a monster scene, a horror scene, because it re it rejects anything that is violent. Well, I shouldn't say rejects all of it. It may accept some, but it it has a it has a barrier in place for violence, um, trafficking, anything like that. It has to do with anything that would normally happen in a violent society. That it won't it won't respond to. It's got a block on that. So if you're looking for a scene where, uh, you know, I described a woman is walking down an alley, somebody jumps out, grabs her from behind and pulls her into a car. If I put that in there, it won't, it won't give me, generate anything. It'll say, this is violent, this is offensive or something like that, and we can't participate right. in that. So there's that limitation if you're a suspense thriller or horror, horror writer, it may not work for you, you know, you got you still got to do that work on your own. Um, well, you, I kind of like that. <laughs> But, but you do, there is suspense. I mean, we know and have a lot of suspense writer friends. And um, yeah, so that, those will just be the parts they'll have to do themselves. Yeah. 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 But, the, but the chat, uh, this is a, just a shout out. Chat GPT cannot write like Stephen James. He just, it, it will not write like Stephen James. So if you're in a parking garage 
and the bad guy's under the car with a razor blade and you're getting ready to unlock your car and he slits your Achilles heel so that you can't run away. Chat GPT can't give you that. You got to read Stephen James for that. And he has a new book coming out. I yeah. don't get the title, Stephen, sorry. But yeah. um, he has He's a new release. Check it out. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen is, there's, he, Chat GPT is no threat to Stephen. Well, this has been fun. Any closing thoughts or comments about Chat GPT and where all this is taking us, Diana? Um, I think it's, you know, an exciting frontier. And I look forward to playing with it because I've had several stories that have started, novels that have started. I think I have seven novels that have begun. And maybe this will be uh, a way for me to finally finish one, you know, so. I yeah. think I'll spend my evenings doing this instead of watching TV. So my, my closing comment would, would be this. <clears throat> the next time you're, you're upset with someone, that you're ready to lash out at somebody with an email, a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, you're ready to just let somebody have it. Take your, write it out, write out what you want to say, put it in chat GPT and say, rewrite with warmth, compassion, and understanding. And let it generate something from that. And then when you look at it, you'll go, hmm, yeah, I'm getting my point across, but I'm not, I'm not flaming somebody. I'm not, yeah. I can probably use that. And, and if we do that, if nothing else, perhaps we'll be a more kinder society, at least online. Uh, I've tried I like to, that. Yeah. I've tried a couple of times, you know, for emails I was going to send to Amazon and what, they, what it gave me back was like, yeah, that's better. That's that would that's more like what Jesus would say. So yes, <laughs> you know. And I'll sign up with what my pastor's wife, uh, Harriet, always says: Jesus is the kindest person we know. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, this has been fun. Thanks, Diana. We'll chat next week. I think maybe next week we've got a guest. Is that right? Yes, we have Zena Dello, who is a screenwriter, movie producer. And uh, just an amazing, fun, high energy person. And we're going to talk about Hollywood and Christian films and the open doors. So join yeah. us next week for Zena Dallow. Thanks, Bye. guys. See you next week.